Well, welcome to another edition of the South End Preview. And of course, this week, it's going to be a fantastic week of fixtures. Well, hopefully, with the, as long as this weather doesn't uh, take hold and we lose uh, a, a lot of fixtures this weekend. So fingers crossed to that and hopefully that doesn't happen. But of course, uh, joining us as usual, we have guests this weekend. and We have two games this weekend that we're looking at uh, more closely than the others. And of course, these uh, games are, of course, uh, Murpha against Truro and also as well Chesham against Western Supermare. Uh, we have been joined by guests from three of the four clubs. Uh, we've got uh, Craig Reddy, the assistant manager of uh, Murpha Town. We've also got Paul, of course, the manager of Truro, and also uh, one of the coaches from Chesham in Michael. They will be joining us later on in the show. But let's start the show as we always do, of course, and we'll start it off uh, with going through some of these fixtures just so you know where they are and uh, and who's playing who um, this weekend. And we start off, of course, with the Southern League Premier Central. And we start off then with Alba Church in 19th. They take on 10th place with Western Town. Of course, that's being played at Lee Meadow. Uh, Barwell in 17th. They take on Bashford United in 12th at Kirby Road Sports Ground. Bedford Town at the Erie in 16th. They take on second place in going great guns at the moment. Of course, Nuneaton Borough. 13th place, Bromsgrove Sporting. They take on 22nd place and under new management now, of course, in AFC Rushton and Diamonds. Colville Town still going strong. Um, in 5th, they take on 6th place, Hitchin Town at the Owen Street Sports Ground. Uh, Needham Market in 15th, of course, they take on 8th place, Redditch Town at Bloomfields. Uh, Russell Olympic in 4th, they take on 18th place, Kings Langley at Dales Lane. St Ives Town in 14th, they take on 7th place, Ilkinson Town. Uh, that, of course, at the Pro Edge Stadium. Uh, Stourbridge in 11th. They take on ninth place, uh, Mikulova, at the War Memorial Athletic Ground. Uh, Stratford Town in 20th. They take on third place, Leaston, at the DCS Stadium. And, of course, a two o'clock kickoff. Please remember that two o'clock kickoff. Uh, Tamworth in first. They take on 21st place, Hensford Town, at the Lambs Ground. But please remember, it's a two o'clock kickoff. Don't get there at three, you'll miss the first half. At the Premier South. It's Chesham United in our main game, who you can hear uh, from Michael later. In third, they take on first place, Western Supermare at the Meadow. Hamwell Town uh, in 14th, they take on 22nd place, North Lee at Re Reynolds Fields. Harrow Borough in 18th, they take on fifth place, Dorchester Town at Ellsmead. Hartley Whitney in 20th, they take on 10th place, Beckersfield Town at the Memorial Fields. Hayes and Yedding United, uh, they take on in ninth. They take on Bracknell Town in seventh uh, from the Cyrex Community Stadium. Of course, they'll be fresh because their game against Truro was called off in midweek. So they haven't had that travel in their legs uh, this week. Paul Town in fourth. They take on Metropolitan Police in sixth at Black Gold Stadium. Salisbury in 12th. Well, they take on 16th place Gosport Borough. And that's at the Raymond McInnell Stadium. Swindon Supermarine in 11th. They take on 21st. Plymouth Pathway at the Webswood Stadium. Tiverton Town in 13th. They take on 19th place, Hendon at Ladies Mead. Uh, Truro City in second. Of course, they take on 8th place, Murphy Town. And that's for Copes, one of our games later. You can hear uh, from Paul and Craig later. Winchester City in 17th. They take on 15th place, Yate Town at the Charters Community Stadium. Of course, uh, in the uh, Central Division, it is AFC Dunstable. They will take on Hadley. That's at Creasy Park Community Football Centre. Burke Hampstead, the leaders, they take on Tame United. Siren Sester, they're starting to move now. They're taking on Biggles Wade at the Karim Stadium. Didcot Town, they take on Owlsbury United at the Draycott Engineering Loop Meadow Stadium. Uh, FC Romania, um, who play at Chessence Ground, remember. Uh, they are playing where in a local derby. Uh, Hartford Town, they take on Kempston Rovers at Hartingford Bree Park. Uh, Highworth Town, after their fantastic away victory last week, of course, against Ware, uh, they take, they're at home this time and they take on Biggleswade Town. Kidlington, uh, they take on Walthamstow at Yarnet Road. And Welling Garden City take on my local side, Waltham Abbey. Uh, in the South Division, it's Bidford, uh, Bidford they, in 17th. They take on AFC Totten in third at the Sports Ground. Cinderford Town in 16th. They take on Limington Town in 18th at the Causeway Ground. Uh, Evesham United in 8th. They take on 5th place, Exmouth Town. That's at the Spears Hartwell Jubilee Stadium. Froome Town in 10th. They take on 20th place, Bristol Manor Farm at the Special Effects Stadium. 
uh, Larkle Athletic in 15th. They take on Wimborne Town in 4th at Plain Ham. Melscombe Town in 14th. They take on Hamworth United, who have now slowly moved into that uh, playoffs in, and are also looking for, of course, automatic now. They're in 2nd. Showling in 1st. They take on Bishops Cleave in 12th. Slimbridge in 19th at Thornhill Park this weekend. Take on 11th place Bash Bashley. Tavistock in 6th. They take on Westbourne United in 9th. And Willan Rovers in 13th take on 7th place Porton Rovers. There's some great games there this weekend. Please look out for the weather forecast as well. Don't set out for some of these big travels. Keep uh, abreast of all of the websites and, uh, of course, also is all social media, the Southern League social media and, of course, the club that you're playing social media as well, just in case there are any pitch inspections and, and late call-offs. So make sure you're checking out on there because the weather's supposed to be, will still be quite cold leading up to the weekend. So please keep an eye out for that. But enjoy your games this weekend. Um, but we are now going to go over to these interviews and some fantastic interviews, in fact. Well, we're going to start off with the uh, the game uh, between Truro and uh, Murpher Town. So please enjoy the interviews and we'll leave you with those. Well, joining us, of course, this week on our uh, Southern League preview is, uh, is, is, well, it's going to be a massive game, but quite a distance apart as well. But it's going to be a, a, a massive game at the weekend because two teams are really going well at the moment. And, uh, and of course, it is Truro and uh, against Murpher at the weekend. And, uh, and joining us, of course, is the Murpher assistant manager, Craig, and, of course, the manager down at Truro in, in Paul. So welcome, guys. How are you doing, Craig? Uh, so this weekend, I mean, it's going to be, you know, both you guys are in, you know, a good, good run of form at the moment. And uh, I mean, if it's okay with you, Craig, start with Paul and, uh, you know, and Paul, I mean, with Truro, I mean, on a, on a great run of form at the moment. And, uh, and this game at the weekend, are you looking forward to this game at the weekend and how tough is it going to be? Well, de definitely looking forward to it. Um and, and it, it's always tough. It, it's just such a cliche. It, it is a it is a tough league this year. Um, you know, we're we're on a our position says we're on a good run of form, but our, our results of late haven't been far. I mean, they've been far from perfect. So um, you know, we had we we did have a, an amazing run. I mean, we won nine on the trot, and um, and then we lost to Cheshire. And we've had a little bit of a wobble, but performances have, have been okay. But um, you know, we haven't quite picked up as many points as we want. But Mer I mean. Mirth is always a tough game. Um, I mean, they play, they, they're the one team really in the league that they play a little bit of a different formation or they normally do against us. That They play like a diamond and um, you know, they move the ball really well and um, they're a threat up front. Um, you know, and they, they play football the right way. Um, the new managers come in from, from Yate last year. Yate were, had a terrific season last year. Brilliant. It, it worked, you know. Great job there. Um, and again, they played good shape and uh, they move the ball really well and they stick to their principles, which is something I really admire at this level because when when the pitches don't get so good, it's, it's very easy to just lump it and, you know, and go away from that. But they don't. And um, I admire them hugely for that. So, listen, at home, I mean, well, at home at, 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 in Plymouth, if, if we're on it and we play well, we've got a chance. If we're not on it, Murpha will... Um, We'll take the points. It, it, it is as simple as that. I mean, you know, they're a really dangerous team. And of course, before that, you got a game uh, uh, tomorrow night, Bracknell Town. I mean, I mean, is, is that gonna, yeah. with the weather the, with the weather that it is at the minute? Is that going to be uh, in question, or will we? No, I think it, on Sunday. I mean, we we was meant to play Chesham on Saturday, and that was disappointingly called off because of the weather. Um, but the game tomorrow, I, I imagine it one hundred percent will be on. It's been. It's bitter cold, but it's uh, it, it's dry. So, um, you know, hopefully it's on. And really looking forward to that game. We haven't played Bracknell yet this year. And um, they've had two tremendous cup runs. Obviously, they're, they're still in the trophy. So, um, and we know that's going to be a very tough game. So, you know, you're quite right. We've got to get through that first before we uh, think about Murpha. But, you know, you always, you're always looking two or three games ahead. So, we've got two tough games coming up, definitely. I mean, with the actual, just away from the game, just for a second, you know, this week, how difficult is it for yourselves and for Plymouth to actually get to all these grounds? Because you, you know, you are sort of like, you know, like in the league that I used to do stuff for in the Eastman League, used to be like Guernsey, where they're out on the, on the limb. Not not that as bad, but I mean, yeah. how, how how difficult is that for you guys? Because I know a lot of people say, I always hear it because it's quite funny. People say. You know how would Lionel Messi play at Stoke on a on a on a, on a dirty Tuesday night? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But, 
in a, but now in non-league, I ever say, oh, I don't want to go down to Truro on a Tuesday night. Do you know <laughs> what I mean? So, I mean, you know, how, how difficult is it if we turn it round? How difficult is that for you? Um, it is difficult. Um, you know, if yeah, I think if you talk about it with the players and you give them that excuse that they'll, like any player, they'll jump on that and, you know, they'll be like, I was lacquered after 10 minutes, been on the bus since seven o'clock in the morning. Um, I think you've got to try and flip it and turn it on a positive. It, um, it, it 1 million percent brings the group closer together. Um, I've been in football, professional football for, for 20 odd years and now, now with Truro um, and some of the best times in football I've had has been coming home from the away game after three points. Lads have a couple of beers, you know what I mean? And it's, it's um, the atmosphere is terrific on, on the bus. So you've got to turn it into a positive. It's also that as well, where we're, where we're from, a lot, a lot of the boys who play for Truro and similar to Murpha, a lot of the, their boys, and they would have come through an academy system. You know, Murpha, I don't know, Swansea, Cardiff, Newport, whatever, and Plymouth. Truro would be the same, Plymouth, Exeter. And I think from the age of like eight or nine, if you're if you're in Plymouth's academy, then then you're used to travelling on Sunday mornings. You, you, you know, you're always up to Bristol or Swindon or Cheltenham, so it becomes part of your makeup, I think. And you know, you, you, there is no other option than to get on with it. But um, this, I mean, for us on the flip side of it, teams coming down to us. That, that's why we're so desperate to get back to to Truro with the new ground because London to Plymouth's a slap, but London to Truro is a whole different matter. I mean, it's another hour and 20 minutes on. So mm. it works to our advantage for home games and away games. You just got to try and get on with it as best you can. Well, just so you know, a conversation we was having pre-interview, Lee Hodges is the name of the gentleman. Lee Hodges, yeah, he's a good pal of mine. <laughs> so that was, uh, that's why he could, it was because I was thinking of, uh, of his, of his uh, sister's maiden name. That's what it was. So that's why I don't know got the name wrong, but it was. Uh, Hodges, Hodges, a really good mate of mine. We had a lot of good times together at Plymouth, yeah. Mm. So I mean, I mean, going back to the game, and we'll you know we'll bring sort of uh, Craig in as well. I mean, this this sort of game. I mean, Craig, you've got the travel in the distance this this time. How much does that sort of come into the the equation? And you know, are you sort of quite glad that it's on a on a tu- on a on, sorry on a Saturday, not a Tuesday? And uh, you know, but I mean, is is it that scenario for you where it's going to be a tough game as well as what Paul said? I mean, it seems to me that this game. This game's going to be extremely close, and it's probably going to be, have quite a crowd there as well. Would you have thought, or even know the distance? Yeah, we, we I mean, we tend to take a good crowd with us wherever we go. We we, have, we always have at least a minibus, whether that's a Saturday or Tuesday. Then we'll have people travel on in cars, and, and quite often we do have a, a thirty-six seat deco as well. So yeah, we'll take a few fans with us as, as normal. Um, in terms of the travelling, again, a bit like Paul says, there, we, we, we're kind of used to it now. It's, it is what it is. We know. We know that when we sign up to it, that, that can't be an excuse. Um, in terms of it being a Saturday, I mean, we have so many midweek games coming up away on Tuesday nights. It's, it's a bit of a nightmare. I, we play, we, we're in, in Plymouth playing through on Saturday. And then on Tuesday, we're away to Cheshire, which is, you know, it's a tough one for us. We've got, I think February, we've got three Tuesday night games and a lot of travelling, but there's nothing we can do about it. That's, that's the league. It is difficult, but we just have to get on with that. Um, in terms of, of it being a tough game Saturday, I don't think there's a tougher away game to go to on in this league than, than to go away to Truro. Um, it, we played them home in the FA Cup um, and we know that we're not reading anything into that. <laughs> They've got two two top goals because I think they scored 30 or 32 goals between them. Neither of them started that game there. So, you know, we, we, we know it's going to be a tough game. Um, we know what a good side they are, and and, and I'm credit to Paul for for what he's getting out of the players there because um, I think last season they, they fell away at the end due to injuries. I know we came there and they were in injury ravaged when we came there, and and they gave us a bit of a lesson there that night. To be fair, so yeah, I don't think there's there's a tougher away fixture for us to go to Saturday than than Truro, to be honest. So with you, with yours though, Paul, I mean. Is there a little bit of revenge in you know in in the players' minds with the five two that uh, in the FA Cup? No, um, well, uh, I mean, I I don't I don't think the players uh, and I definitely won't be harping on about any revenge. I mean, um, listen, Murphy were full value for their win that day. No, and you know you, 
when you lose a game of football and you, and you deserve to lose a game of football, you have to be man enough to hold your hands up and admit you've been slapped, really. I mean, second half, we got absolutely annihilated. So, um, you know, but that's, the FA Cup um, wasn't a priority of ours this year, um, nor was the FA Trophy. So, um, you know, and Craig obviously knows this and it's no secret, our, our starting lineup would be different from that in the FA Cup, even though we did have a, a strong team. But Mur Murph, uh, second half, absolutely rumped us and we was lucky to lose five, uh, only 5-2, really. So, you know, I've got no problems with that. And as for revenge, no, it's, listen, it's it's just a game um, for 90 minutes. Everyone out there and everyone involved in the dugout wants, wants to win as badly as everyone else. You know, but before the game, you shake hands and after the game, you shake hands. It's, it's a game of football and, you know... No, no matter how passionate you are and how much you want to win it during that 90 minutes, it's when the whistle's done, it's done and you, you win, lose or draw. Simple as that, you know what I mean? There is no other way of looking at it. I mean, with, with this scenario, you know, because of the, not necessarily the distance between you two guys, I'm not sure how many miles it is between the two and I don't want to, what, how hard is it for, say, Truro and, and even Murph, I suppose, in a way we've been in Wales and, and, and so forth with some of the travelling that you've got to do as well. How difficult is that then to maybe, uh, Craig, you've done scouting on Paul's team or Paul, you've done um, scouting on Murphy. You know, is that is that possible because of the situation of, you know, money in non-league and et cetera, et cetera, and happy to try and find someone to go that distance? Yeah, but, I, I, you know, a lot of sides this, especially more so this season, I'd say, I've got real cams where they film the game. So, you know, you speak to other managers in the league, you try and, you try and do it that way. Um, and, and get as much information as you can, but yeah, it, it, I mean, in terms of actually sending someone there, you know, we, we're not going to be sending somebody down to Plymouth to watch the game. Um, and, and I'm sure every man just say the same, but as well as that, you have to concentrate on yourselves. And you, you know, we've been we've been up and down a little bit this season. Um, we know on our day we're a very good side, but we haven't had enough of those days to be honest. So that's so all we can do is focus on ourselves. Like I said, we. We've played them previously. We're not going to read too much into that. Um, we we knew that day that they were prioritising the league um, because they got a very good chance of, of winning our league and getting promoted. So we won't read too much into that. Um, but yeah, it, it it is a lot more difficult with the resources and things at this level. Whereas the pros are, you know, they've got enough money in some of those clubs to go and send the scouts. So yeah, you know, it's the same for all, well, most of the clubs. Um, anyway, so there's no advantage or disadvantage really. Is that the same for you as well, Paul? Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, your, your location, you're very limited, aren't you? I mean, like, great. I mean, if, if Murphy were playing on a Tuesday night, I'm not going to get in my car and drive to Murphy and watch him. Um, <laughs> but, however, I mean, Craig's spot on. I mean, you, you do speak to different people and, you know, it's, the huge thing is, is and like you're just saying, Craig's absolutely bang on. I think at this level, any level of football, but at this level, if you can get your team right, then then you've got a fighting chance in every game, I think. But, um, you know, there is, I mean, to us, there would obviously there's Parkway, who, who play in Plymouth, Tiverton, you know, so you do try and, I go to the odd game, but not to watch Parkway or to watch Tiverton, to watch the opposition, so you might, but then you might watch them and you're not playing them for another six weeks. And, and at this level as well, players chop and change an awful lot. Yeah. David, you know what I mean? It's it's you can you can go and watch a team on a on a Saturday and the following Saturday they've got four or five different players. So it is about concentrating on yourself, really. Um, you know, and just making sure you're as you're as prepped and as fit as you can be. But I would I would personally love to go and watch a lot more games, but hey, listen, you're not getting in till half two in the morning coming back. Just, just nah. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean with it though, I mean with the actual you know the league system and everything else. I mean, what was the what was the plans? And I know it's it's been a you know for Truro. I mean, you know what what was your sort of like um, expectations at the beginning of the season? And I suppose the same thing for you as well, Craig. But I mean, yours might have been a little bit different because of the the little scenario at the beginning of the season. But I mean, what is the if we say we'll start with Truro first? And you know what was the what was your sort of expectation at the beginning? Was it a case of like, you know, you sitting down with a chairman going, and I know most managers would probably do this, but looking at it going, right, we're going to go for automatic promotion this year, worst case scenario, the playoffs, or was it 
you know, and I'm assuming that's what it was for yourself because you've already said it wasn't a necessarily an FA Cup run or a trophy run. So was was that your sort of thoughts, you know, thoughts uh, at the beginning of the season? I think, you know, I, I could easily come on here now and, and give it the old, you know, we just want to do as well as we can and we don't set expectations. Of course you do. And I mean, listen, we, we, we want to win the league. And if that ain't, if that don't work, we want to get in the playoffs. If that don't work, it's probably failure for us. Do you know what I mean? It's, I think not prior, prioritising FA Cup or trophy, David, I think that, that came from, we, we had a terrific start. Of, we've started of late, but we had a terrific start. Now, if we'd had a poor start, then I think pressure comes from above to say, look, we need a little cup run here. Or, you know, we need, obviously you've got to get some money in, you've got to do, um, but that didn't happen. So we sit, I mean, every, and the, the, absolutely to win the league, mate. But you don't come out and say, listen, we're, we're going to win the league. We're going, we expect to win the league. It's not about expecting to win the league. It's, it's wanting to win it. Now, wanting it and expecting it are two different things. I don't expect anything in football. I don't expect three points. I, I, I don't expect to, you know, it, you, you get what you deserve. And our ambition, our ambition is, to, is to get out of the league. Um, you know, that we're getting into a new ground. We've got new owners coming in. It's, it's an exciting time. Um, and obviously to play in the next level up would, would be amazing. But saying it and doing it are two different things, mate. I mean, only one goes up automatic. It's brutally, brutally hard to, to win automatic promotion in this league with some terrific teams in it. Um, you know, and the playoffs, as you, as you well know, mate, and, and, and Craig will know, is an absolute toss of a coin. So you just keep plugging away, mate. And, but in answer to your question, absolutely you know, promotion is the aim. And if we get it, terrific. If we don't, you get what you deserve in football, I think, at the end of the season, you know. And we sell Craig. I mean, what what was the what was it? I know it's a bit difficult because you know you speak to Paul. We, yeah, didn't, we didn't know what was going on at one stage and then Yeah, so like, Paul and Smudge came in at the end of last season, right the following day, the season finished on the Saturday, the following day, Paul and, and Smudge appointment came in. Um and we were preparing to go on the league below. Um, we're fortunate that most of the players wanted to stay anyway. Um, and then when we had that reprieve, it was right, okay, let's refocus, set our, set our goals in Europe. And I think at that stage, it was, it was kind of, I think if you ask any of the supporters, it was right, good. We have a good cup run. It's been a while since we've had a good, a good FA Cup run. We'd like to have an FA Cup run. And after the, the, the two of the last couple of seasons, if we could finish mid table, it'd be safe. Now, the threat of relegation, we'd be happy with that. However, you get to a point, you think we're okay. You know, we've got a good side. We can pick up points, and and I think you get a little bit greedy and think, right? Can we finish a little bit higher up? Can we finish a little bit higher? Can we be in and around the playoffs? Um, we're around them now, with games in hand and, and things, and and then you start looking, right? Can we make those playoffs? That you know, that's that's what we're looking at. That that would be our tag target now. Would be to try and sneak into those playoffs. Um, looking at, I think, I think the top top three are ten points clear of anybody else. Um, so there's a bit of catching up to do, but you know, you, it's no good settling now. Kind of halfway through the season, and saying, right, we mid table. Can we finish mid table? That's that's not good to anyone. We need to keep pushing on. So, yeah, can we sneak in those playoffs? That's what we'll be be looking at and, and trying to. But as Paul says, you can't expect anything in football, um, and, and we have to keep doing, working hard, and, and doing what we've been doing. And, and sometimes you're hoping. I just drop points to pick up, and and that's what we'll do. We'll we'll just keep plugging away, and and it's it's, it's a work in progress. It's like I said, we haven't had a full season with the management in charge yet, so it's still getting ideas across the players, still trying to bring uh, players in and add to the squad that we've got, and we'll see where it takes us. Oh, I don't know if you guys know uh, Paul and and uh, and Craig. I mean, where you are, but I mean, just looks at. I just pulled up football web pages just to have a look and see where form guide in the last six games. See see where you guys are, and uh, I mean, Murphy a, a fifth, uh, thirteen from six, and and Truro and Knight with nine from six. So it's going to be a an as we said a real tough tough game, and I, and I expect you know you, that you guys are, are are both looking forward to the weekend and hoping that this. Supposed snow keeps well away, and uh, and we get the game on. Yeah, I think um, as I said earlier, I don't think it matters where where you're on the lead table. I know that you know, we say Paul's teams, we know they're going to be 
be hard to beat. They can be hard to break down. They're going to have good quality going forward. They're going to work hard. They're going to be well organised. So regardless of the form table, we know it's, it's like I said, it's probably for me one of, if not the toughest away game we could have on Saturday. So yeah, fingers crossed the weather's okay and and we get to go and uh, travel down and play. Mm. <clears throat> Dreading the snow this week, Paul. I hope it keeps away. No, well, uh, I don't think it'll snow in in Plymouth. I mean, listen, it might snow on the moors around there, but I, I think we'll be on. I think we'll we'll um, and I don't want it off, mate. And Craig don't want it off, and it's not about bringing them down on a Tuesday night. I, I hate games in hand, mate. I'd rather just get our games played, and um, you know, too many midweek games catches up with you when you've only got small squads at this level, so. Um, now, nah, looking forward to it. We've got to get Bracknell out of the way first on Wednesday, which I'm looking forward to as well. But on Saturday, um, like I said at the start, just to just to um, reiterate the point, you, you've always got a proper game against Murpher. They, they play football the right way. They, they move the ball, energetic. You know, they, they tricky tricky formation to play against. So I'm I'm looking forward to it. And uh, listen, I'm sure we'll have a beer afterwards. See if Craig can get Gav down for the weekend as well. <laughs> he doesn't need much much for his own fair pay, don't <laughs> <he? laughs> yeah. Well, of course, you know, if you wanted a scout as well, of course, Craig, you could always just ask the chairman to go down to uh, to Truro, you know, yeah. t- uh, tomorrow night and and uh, and have a look at the uh, you know have a look at the game, can't he? Yeah, the yeah. The league, you could sneak down there tomorrow night and be a, you know special guest and come back with a full you know dossier. He does, he does <laughs> love a trip, does our man? He does love a trip and bear us to him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't worry, Paul, Paul will make sure his name's definitely not on the gate tomorrow night. <laughs> <laughs> While he's sitting at Wembley enjoying the sun today. But listen, guys, a massive thank you for, for joining us. And I really appreciate you coming on. I really no. do. I, w- I really do wish you guys all the very, very best uh, for the for well for tomorrow night, firstly, Paul, and then you know, also at the weekend, and of course also to you, Craig, and to pass our best wishes on to Paul as well. And everybody at Murphy, and the same with you, Paul. You know, all the best wishes to everybody down at uh, Truro. Hopefully, I get to come down and see your uh, bank holiday game on uh, Bank Holiday Monday, it'd be great to come down and uh, and and see your team because obviously it's one team I've always wanted to come down and watch. So uh, fingers crossed, as I'm down that way, I might get in there to uh, to say hello. Absolutely, no, I look forward to it. And appreciate the uh, appreciate your time. No problems whatsoever. Thanks, guys. Really appreciate. All it. Best. Cheers. 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 Bye. Bye. And of course, also joining us today and uh, to talk about. Uh, Another massive game. We were just talking about the form guide and looking at the form guide, there's not any bigger, well, people at the top of the form guide than Chesham against uh, Western Supermare. And they're both first and second in that form guide over the last uh, six games. So uh, so welcome, uh, Michael, coach at, uh, at Chesham. We're really pleased to have you on. Cheers, David. Thanks for having me, mate. Sorry I was a little bit late. Oh, no problems whatsoever, you know, and we'll, we'll be as quick as we can. And I mean, with with the game at the at the weekend, I mean, what are you spot, you know, what are you hoping to come from it, and what are you expecting from it? Because Western are, you know, you know, are, are flying just like yourselves at the moment, but you're sticking in there and and uh, keeping up that pressure on them. Yeah, I think that I think that's the the key thing for for us at the moment, just to try and keep as much pressure on Western as we can. Oh, I think they're the best side in the league. I've said it multiple times. Um, you know they're they're always going to be a difficult team to face. When we played them earlier on in the season, I think we caught them on a an off day, and I think we were all we were all superb on the evening, and and we got what we deserved on that night, and, and that was the three points. And Saturday is going to be no different. I think we're going to have to catch them on a bit of an off day, and we are going to have to all be you know your eight nines out of ten. And if we can do that, then you know we'll be definitely competitive against them. And you never know, David. We might be able to turn that around and, and get the three points, and then and then the league table will look a little bit, you know, a little bit different. Then with an extra three points on us, and I know they've still got a game in hand, but you know that's all we can do, mate, is take game by game. And we got a big one Saturday. We're fortunate, really, um, upon reflection, that we had Truro called off um, last week. And in our eyes, it's a little bit fortunate, just purely because we had a we had a run of Bracknell, Truro, and Western in the space of three games and you know we got through the Bracknell one and, and got three points and to then go Truro and then Western that's that's a, a big big R so give us a bit of a breathing breathing space for this weekend's fixture. And you say that of course then the game after that of course is Murpher who of course 
Craig, just been on there. He's, you know, it's, it's, it's an incredible run of fixtures when you actually look at your. Yeah, the I, think game you by, I think we follow up by Beaconsfield as well uh, yeah. at their place. So, look, I just pulled them three out because you yeah. know they're 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 at the top of the well, Truro and Western Eye. You know, they're the the two at the the very top that everyone's trying to chase. But there's no real, there's no easy fixtures in this league. But definitely in that in that batch, we've just we have come up against five tough really tough fixtures on the trot. I mean, I said to Peter before, and was chairman, you know, we've got to be down as one of the strongest leagues, you know, this and the Isthmian Prem. I mean, you know, he's, he's two, you know, really, really difficult, uh, difficult leagues. When you see, you know, the, you know, the pe- the teams that are in it are just, you know, scary. Yeah, I mean, I think obviously the the size of the clubs that are in it, the teams, the, the travelling, obviously it does, it does, does take its toll. There's no two ways about that. Um, but yeah, there's some of the clubs in it, and you know, some of the clubs are not probably where they, you know, should probably feel they should be. So um, yeah, the, for me, it's the the toughest league um, out of the three. But you know, I'm sure maybe other in other divisions they may say different. <laughs> so I mean, the game, the game at the weekend. I mean, you know, players wise or fitness wise, have we got everybody fit for the game at the weekend? We have. I've got to be honest. We we have had a real tough year in with injuries. Um, a real tough year where we've lost uh, a couple of really important players for the whole season. Um, but we've recruited not badly, and I've got to be honest. Though we've now over the last, I'd say three or four weeks, we've been touchwood, been in a position where we've we've had everyone available. Um, so we we can't complain on on that on that front. We might the only one that maybe a doubt is Steve Brown, our, our captain. Um, he may be a doubt, but he's back to he's back to training now, so he he may be available for selection. But everyone's available, so we'll we'll see how we go on Thursday uh, for team selection for Saturday. What's the what's the um, the distance then between yourselves and Western Supermare? Because Western Supermare are down in Somerset area, aren't they? Yeah, um, I think I forget what it took us now. I think it's a couple of hours. I w- I was actually going to go and watch their game v. Beaconsfield. I know Watts was talking about earlier the travelling to go and watch games, but uh, they were due to play Beaconsfield, I believe, on Saturday. So I was going to go and watch it. I think it takes about two, two and a half hours. Um, so, so it is a it is a journey. Um, and like Watts said earlier, it's it's not just the journey there. It's you know by the time you get home, it ends up being um you know a long time out of the house, etc. So um, it's it's not round the corner for mm-hmm. sure. And I mean, you, you know, you said there, didn't you, earlier on, you said that, you know, you, and speaking to Peter, I know you had, you know, two real serious injuries and, you know, that, that happened in quick succession and and still to be only sort of six points behind Western, I know they've got a game in hand, but you're six points, you know, six points behind them, you know, sitting in third, a point behind Truro, and there's a 10 point gap then between yourselves and Paul Town in fourth. That's an incredible achievement when you've lost two really important players like you've lost to still be in touch with with the likes of Western and, and, and Truro. Yeah, we're incredibly, incredibly pr- proud to be where we are, to be honest, David. Um, everyone's got their own story to tell with injuries. I always say that, you know, every every club, every team have injuries. But this year has really hit us hard. And to be our goal from, from the get-go was to try and better what we did last season. And that was just missed out on the playoffs. And, you know, we did have a real good run the, the second half of the season and didn't start so well. So we've tried to just better that. And, you know, with that this season, we have picked up some injuries to them two key players. They were, but also um, we've had some some injuries in around, you know, Bradley Clayton, who can arguably say one of our better players over the last three years. Um, I don't I think he's maybe played four or five games. So he's been out quite a long time. So, look, we're we're very proud of where we are at the moment. But we are where we are, so it's something to kick on from. We don't want to sit still. And now the fact that we have got that bit of a gap, we want to we want to try and close the the gap uh, above us to Truro and to Western. And if we can stay with them, the last stages of the season, you just don't know what could happen. And of course, you know the team. You could see how strong the team was. I I, I was lucky enough, or unlucky, depends on which way around you want to look at the result. Lucky enough to see you when you came down to my team at uh, Enfield Town, and uh, you know, in in the uh, was it the trophy? Was it in the trophy? Was it the trophy? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, and, and gave us a good eye in down at our own patch. Do you know what I mean? So it's it's, it's a strong old team in you know in, in that league. And I mean, from the beginning of the season, I mean, when 
you know, the manager sat down with, you know, with Peter and, or the, you know, the management team sat down possibly with Peter. What what was your goal at the beginning of the season? Was it back to try and get in the playoffs or did you feel that you were strong enough to, you know, to go all the way and, and, and take, the, you know, take automatic promotion? Um, I think I think it was just to better what we what we got to last year. And we just missed out on the playoffs last year with a game or two to go. And really analysing why that was was just really because we we didn't rec- uh, we didn't start well, David. To be honest, and we put ourselves in the back foot, and we had a mountain to climb. To be honest, so from from Peters, the board, the owners, it was just purely to try and better what we done from last season. And if we can do that, we'll you know we'll be delighted, and that will mean we'll get in the playoffs. But like I said, if we can just stick in there, and um, you just don't know what will happen close to the end of the season. So just stick in there is our goal now and, and see what happens. I was just looking at your that your home record, their away record, and did you believe it or not, it's exactly the same. Eight wins, two defeats and one loss. So it's, it, it just shows you that this game's score draw. <laughs> <laughs> um, it will be, um, I really think it will be a fascinating game. I do. Um, at, at home, we're, we're good at home. Um, unfortunately, lost to Hayes recently, but we are. We tend to be very good. We've got a good record since we've come to the football club at, at home. So it will be, it'll be a tough fixture um, for them and for us, to be honest. So yeah, it'll be interesting how it develops. That's for sure. Is it one of those games, though? You know, um, uh, Michael, where he, would it, we, and it's only early. It's only sort of game twenty-four. There, game twenty-three. But is it a must-win game? Is it one of those sort of games? Because, you know, if they, if they win, they go nine points in front and a game in hand. You know, is it is it one of those games where, it, I suppose you could call it a six-pointer, you know, but a promotion six-pointer rather than a relegation one? I mean, I think some managers could, we might just sit on the fence here, but I think, I've got to be brutally honest, I don't see if we got beat on, on Saturday, how Western would then drop the potential nine to 12 points. Um, with us having to win all the remaining games. So, look, we're going into the game to try and win it as we do in any game. And, and that's what we'll be doing on Saturday. And, and if, if, it doesn't, if it doesn't come off and we, we get a draw or we do get beat, then our focus will turn to the next one and, and we'll just carry on like that. Mm. I mean, how's, how's the fans coming along with you, though? Are they, are they, is the excitement starting to build with them? Especially yeah. this weekend. Yeah, I mean, I'm expecting a, a, a really good crowd for the weekend. We had a real good one against Hayes at home. Unfortunately, it didn't go too well, that game. Uh, we didn't score and we've obviously got beat. But hopefully they'll see the, the size of the game and um, what a big game it is. So I'm sure they'll be out in their numbers. And the supporters have been like fantastic for me and James since we come in. So we they've been absolutely outstanding. We've had, a, we've had our tough times. Especially in cups, we haven't um, exactly been successful, but you know they've they've always stuck with us. So hopefully on Saturday we'll be able to give them a performance that they're proud of, and if that comes with three points, then all be it. I mean, I, I, from what I remember, is Mr. Baptiste being one of your, you know, just being an absolute beast on the day when he played it, when he played Enfield. But James, I mean, James though, of course, used to manage a club just around the corner from me, didn't he? At one stage in Potters Bar. Yeah, so Potter's Bar, we obviously at the time we were at Potter's Bar and I was playing at the time and we just got promoted from the league below. And and James was, I think, I think he was coach manager then under Steve, Steve Ringrose and Steve then stepped stepped aside and, and, and James was doing it full time. And then this opportunity just come up. And um although it was it was frowned upon a little bit, got to be honest at the time. Um, I think Potters Bar had just been promoted to step three and we were sitting sixth or seventh after a good start. Not many games played, mind, uh, but after a good start. And uh, I believe Chesham, from memory, were rock bottom. So it was a, a strange one for people to, to see on paper, to be honest, moving from some team at seventh to team at bottom at the same level. Um, but we both knew that the size of the football club was, you know, just enormous so it was it was an opportunity that we just couldn't turn down and to be honest we're, we're very grateful we made that decision 
Absolutely. Well, listen, Michael, over the weekend, we wish you all the best. Stay there because I've got something to ask you. But I mean, literally, uh, you know, we wish you all the very, very best against Western at the weekend. And I hope you get those three points and uh, and put that pressure on them. And uh, and then, you know, hopefully you will you can squeeze in there and get into that uh, into that top position. Cheers. Thanks, mate. Well, a massive thank you, of course, to uh, to all of our guests uh, today. Of course, Michael uh, and of course, Craig and of course, Paul. Hopefully you enjoyed all those interviews. And of course, don't forget, we're here every single week uh, with the Southern League uh, preview show. So make sure you join us uh, for that. Great news. Steve's on the uh, on the mend. He's getting well. So hopefully he'll be back with us very, very shortly. And of course, big news going to be coming out very, very soon about another show that will be hitting uh, the Southern League YouTube channel. Please let everybody know that uh, that we're here every week. Please let everybody hit that subscribe button um, and make sure you subscribe to the channel. 296 subscribers. Let's see if we can really raise that, uh, raise it up in the uh, coming weeks. Please subscribe to us. Uh, but a massive thank you for watching. And, and from me and from everybody at the Southern League, massive thank you. And we'll see you all next week.